Hello, everybody. Once again, as you can see, I got the Captain Amazing headset on, which means today it's time for their tool demo. Now, today I want to start talking about the portable drill and the impact driver. Both of these perform similar functions and they look very similar, but they do this in a different way. So the first thing I want to look at is the drill. Okay, the drill is pretty simple. We have the trigger here that activates the actual drill. We have forward and back, and we have the speed control on the top. Now the speed control is dedicated to just what it sounds like, changing the speed of the drill. If you're drilling holes, typically you want to be on the number two setting, that's faster. If you're driving in screws, typically you want to be in the number one setting because that's slower. The chuck key at the end or the chuck at the end allows you to adjust for different sizes of bits and allows you to actually tighten the bits, whereas on the impact driver, we do not have an adjustable chuck at the end. The, adjust, the chuck on this end is actually dedicated to a quick attach system for drill bits and such like that. Now I'll show you the difference in how this thing operates and why these two are designed for each function here in a moment. But one thing I totally forgot to mention was PPEs. Now PPEs with this setup are very, very similar to what we've done in the last. You wanna have eye protection obviously. Even though these tools aren't historically very loud, you do want to wear hearing protection because they can cause that squealing high pitch sound you hear from time to time. And also with these things, gloves are a nice easy to have. However, if you're operating these without an instantaneous switch, like for example, these triggers are called an instantaneous switch. If they have an on off switch, then you do not want to wear gloves with a drill because there's a chance the glove can become entangled in the drill and cause greater injuries than they're meant to prevent in the first place. So you need to make sure that if you are wearing gloves, they need to be on a drill that has an instantaneous trigger like most drills do, but there are drills with a on off switch on them, which you don't see very often, but it does happen. Now in regards to the impact driver, this thing was solely designed for driving in screws. You can drill holes with it, but it wasn't designed for that. And the biggest difference between the two of them is obviously the way they attach their bit. So we can see here the chuck on your drill. You slide your bit into it and you tighten your chuck down. You tighten it by hand. Now I have to emphasize with this thing, do not use the battery to tighten your drill bits. And the reason why, because here's what students do. Okay, put the drill on number two setting. Okay, and they will hold the chuck key and they'll hold it and pull the trigger full bore until the chuck gets completely jammed in the in or the out position. The reason why you don't want to do that is because once it's jammed in the out position, it now becomes really, really hard to loosen. And what's even worse is if you go all the way in and you get jammed on the in position where the, the teeth get retracted all the way into the chuck, and you jam it in that direction, it becomes really, really hard to get the thing loose. And usually what I have to end up doing is putting the chuck into a vise with some pliers on it and turning it and ruining the chuck and making it into a big mess. So in other words, make sure that when you're adjusting the chuck teeth in or out, just do it with your hand. Don't try to take the lazy method and pull the trigger and then get the chuck jammed because that makes things way worse in the long run. Now, in regards to setting these things up for your hole, Okay, obviously if we're drilling in the metal or wood, it's gonna require a little bit different setup. So we're gonna take our adjustable combination square, and set this thing up for those five inches, that was about right. Now if we're going on wood, we can see here, I'm marking on wood, I can use my square and use a pencil, and pencil shows up pretty good on wood. Okay, we can see that. Okay, and that can give me my mark like that. Now, if we're drawing this on metal, we can't see pencil very good on metal, okay? You can kind of see it, but it's really hard to see. Instead, what you want to use when you're drawing your lines on metal is you want to use your scribe. Now, remember, your scribe is different than your punch. Your scribe's got a sharpened point on it that is meant for etching lines in metal. The punch is meant for literally just punching a single divot in the metal, so that way you have a place for the bit to set in. So if I'm going to scribe my line on here, I'm going to line this up with an existing scribe that I have. I'm going to push down pretty hard, and I'm going to scribe it by dragging it across the middle like that. Next, I want to get my crosshairs. Put my crosshairs like that, and the metal moved on me, and I wasn't supposed to do that. Pull it down a little tighter. There we go. Now I have my crosshairs here for me to drill into. Before I start drilling, though, since we're drilling by hand, 
this is where it's vitally important that you actually use a center punch for putting a divot in your metal. Because if you don't do this, then your drill bit is going to do what's called walking across the metal. Okay, you now have a little divot for the bit. So let me show you what's going to happen if you don't have that hole, that little divot for the drill bit to go into. So if I drill bit in, tighten it by hand. Do not use the drill to tighten it. Next, I want to set this up so when I drill, my drill bit goes through and not into the table. So we can see here, if I drill straight through here, the drill bit will actually go through the metal, straight through the metal like this, and out through at the edge of the table. Not to say this, because what you don't want to do is set this up like this, have the drill bit go through straight to the table. You want to line this up in a way where the drill bit goes through, it's not going to drill into the table. Now, we can't hold this by hand. We have to make sure this is secure before we start drilling in that. To do that, you need get a pair of vice grips or clamps. We want to clamp this thing down so it's not going to move on us while we're drilling on it. Okay? We're going to clamp this thing down pretty tight. And we can see here, it's pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to grab my drill. And we can see here that, first, it is important that you always have your drill purposely straight up and down. Now, as you can see here, if I'm looking down the thing from the top, okay, it looks pretty straight to me. However, we can see here that even though I'm looking down from the top, if I look at this thing from the side, it's not straight. So before you ever start drilling your hole, Take a minute to not only look straight down at it, but also take a minute to look at this thing from the side to make sure that it's actually straight up and down from the side on both sides, okay? Because the last thing you want to have happen is you start drilling on this thing and you realize it's actually been angled the whole time. So before I start drilling on this thing, it is important for it to be up and down straight, but I also want to take note that if I don't have my divot here, okay, if I have my divot, and I start drilling, my drill bit is probably going to walk on me like that. You see how the drill bit's like walking across the metal? This happens quite often, okay? And it happens usually if you're not, one, holding it straight and down. Two, it also happens if you don't have a little divot for the hole for the bit to set in. So if you're not doing really straight and down, your drill bit will walk on you like you see there, okay? So it's important that you do have this is for the drill bit to rest and so it will walk across the metal on you like this. So I'm going to start with my hole here. Okay. And then I'm just going to slightly press down on this thing. I'm on too fast. I do want this to be on speed setting one. Okay. A couple of tips on this thing. Position your body so that way if the drill bit gets caught, it spins into your body. And not into your hand because if you position it like this and it gets caught, and the drill can get ripped out of your hand, it's really going to hurt your wrist. In fact, there's been times when people have been drilling overhead, and the drill gets caught in something, and it spins all the way around, you can smack it with something. Ah, that doesn't feel very good. So, position yourself in a way where the drill is like pressing up against your body a little bit, so it makes it a little bit easier for the drill to get caught. Make sure it's on number one setting. You should be adding cutting fluid, even though I didn't do it here. And what we're looking for are those long, stringy bits of metal that come flying off, as you saw there. Long, string pieces of metal are good. Once you hear the motor block a little bit, then you can through. Let off a little bit. You hopefully won't get flying through and get left off. After you get the hole drilled, you can clamp your material. And you have your hole. Okay. Now I told you to see the difference between the drill and the impact driver. So the drill can drive screws in. Okay. We know that because we've all done it one point or another. And we can attach our drill bit in like that, and we can drive our screw in pretty easily. Okay. Now Drill does it just fine. However, the impact driver makes it really easy because it has a really fast start. So that way it starts the drill or starts the screw quicker. 
but then it has the impacting mechanism, which allows it to be driven in a lot more efficiently without the chances of the drip bit being stripped out. And that was really fast, apparently. Okay. So you can hear the impacting mechanism on this thing. Okay. And it goes pretty quick, as you can tell. And that is really driving screws in wood. Uh, you don't obviously want to use some metal because, well, you can't really fabricate the metal. So, um, that's really about the most safe products I want to cover. Uh, make sure that your drill is always perfect up and down when you're drilling. Make sure it's free. Make sure your wood is clear of any defects. Make sure your uh, lines are clearly marked. And also make sure you brace yourself so that way the drill doesn't twist away from you if it ever gets an operation. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys.